In recent months, we've seen an attack on free speech in the secular political world that is very dangerous. That attack, which is very coordinated, has come to Catholic media. This is certainly not the first time these kinds of attacks have happened, but this turn of events should hit very close to home for anyone in the traditional Catholic world, especially in light of the coming certification process for Catholic media that was proposed at the Synod's final document. As of now, this attack is first targeting life site news, and to that media source we go. Urgent, life site is under attack. This is the updated edition of the article. Updated at 11.55 a.m. on the 27th of October, that would have been this past Saturday. Our web developer was up all night implementing temporary measures to keep our site online even if our current web hosting company followed through on its threat to shut down our services. As an interjection for those of you who do not understand uh, online technology at all, the LifeSite News' very existence is under threat. We'll continue. We are extremely grateful for his hard work on a Saturday, Saturday night. However, this is only a temporary solution. We are currently looking for a web hosting company that will not cave to threats of this kind. We are also exploring legal options to combat Adam Flanders' campaign of harassment, as well as our web hosting company's extraordinary decision to give us 12 hours to move our site late on a Saturday evening. We will keep our readers posted. October 27th, 2018, the original article. This is extremely urgent. I need to inform you that LifeSite just received an email at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from our web hosting company alerting us that they will be taking our website down within 12 hours, if not sooner. They wrote, we are implementing our suspension of services clause and giving you 12 hours to move your website operations off of our servers. We received absolutely no forewarning whatsoever about this decision. The company told LifeSite it is acting in response to a months long campaign of complaints against us by Adam Flanders. Flanders is a convicted sex abuser and Bay Area activist who is angered over our reports exposing him and his past. As LifeSite recently reported, he has already succeeded in taking down other pro-family websites by targeting their server companies. Flanders's latest complaint is focused on the absurd allegation that LifeSite, quote, has been implicated in a violent hate crime against a gay man and Catholic church, end quote and that we, quoting, instigated property damage and a physical assault, end quote. Our web server is scrambling right now to set up a possibly needed temporary solution to keep the website live. However, we're going to have to go through the ordeal and expense of moving server companies. We also intend to fight these attacks, which will carry significant legal costs. LifeSite is, continued, is committed to continue reporting on Flanders and the entire anti-freedom Bay Area lifestyle lobby and then they have an option for you to donate. LifeSite has a history of reporting on the Bay Area activists in the Catholic clergy and their undermining of traditional Catholic morality, as well as the activities of similar groups in the secular world. Founded in the late 1970s by the Campaign Life Coalition, LifeSite has been sued multiple times for the reporting and often accused of hate crimes for speaking against the current trend in the secular culture of accepting and promoting the Bay Area lifestyle. Clearly, they've been targeted in a coordinated way for exposing a Bay Area degenerate who should be rightly sitting in a jail cell for his crimes, not having access to the needed institutional power to take down not insignificant media outlets. Let's review the initial piece from LifeSite that caused them such grief. Convicted same-sex offender uses scare tactics to shut down website on truth about the Bay Area lifestyle. Note that I'm using code here, please. Chicago, September 18th of this year. A convicted Bay Area sex predator has employed threats and scare tactics to harass a pro-family website dedicated to revealing the truth about same-sex attraction. The Bay Area lifestyle predator's uncanny success in shutting down pro-family websites provides further evidence of an anti-conservative censorship crisis in corporate America. The entire website for Americans for Truth about same-sex attraction, AFTAH.org, was shut down for more than two weeks beginning August 24th after a convicted 
Bay Area sex offender, Adam Flanders, threatened a lawsuit against First Light Fiber, the, first, the internet service provider, or ISP, for AFTA's web host company. Flanders claimed his mugshot photo from a 2006 assault arrest against a minor boy was copyrighted material. That's an inventive way to do it. Flanders, a Bay Area activist, is a registered sex offender in both Maine and California where he now lives, explains Peter LaBarbera, founder of AFTA and a former LifeSite news writer. He pleaded guilty in 2008 to sexual abuse of a minor involving a boy aged 14 or 15. He also admitted to engaging in Bay Area style sex with his then 14 year old boyfriend when he was 18 in a 2007 public letter exposing a Maine same sex youth club. Later, Flanders sought to retract the letter and demanded that websites take it down. La Barbera said that Flanders has a long history of making litigious and mendacious threats containing absurd, exaggerated, and sometimes nonsensical claims against pro-family leaders and websites that have exposed his past criminal offenses and other actions. AFTA will not take it down because it's obviously in the public domain and not owned by Flanders, said La Barbera, who notes that mugshots are routinely used in news stories and political ads. La Barbera and Jared Heath, CEO of Alpha Technology, AFTA's web host company, are weighing their legal options against Flanders and First Light Fiber, the ISP that capitulated to his spurious email demand. Another ISP, HostGator, took down an AFTA temporary site, which was created to replace AFTA's original site after it had been forced to go dark. That site, Americans for Truth Censored, remains down. Flanders' reckless actions and the ISPs that bowed to them have caused me and Jared Heath, the ex-Marine who runs AFTA's web host company, severe emotional and mental distress. They also have caused us significant financial harm and damage to our reputations, said La Barbera. I know Flanders wants to ease, erase his crimes from the web, especially his sexual abuse of a minor conviction, but we will never give in to his intimidation tactics. First Light took down the entire AFTA website on August 24, 2018, three days after receiving an abuse complaint demanding removal of copyrighted content pursuant to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA. As an aside, DMCAs are terrifying and take down a lot of YouTube channels. The AFTA site has been up since September 10th using a separate IP address, but Flanders is continuing continually working to take it down, and is again threatening legal action against La Barbera and Heath. First Light's reckless takedown of an entire pro-family website contains thousands of articles, based on a single email containing outlandish assertions by a Bay Area lifestyle activist trying to erase his criminal history, demonstrates the growing crisis of anti-conservative censorship in, pro in corporate America, said La Barbera. So we have not one, but two Christian media outlets being targeted. This needs to be viewed in light of the bigger problem going on in the broader secular culture regarding political speech. This week, in the aftermath of that horrific mass shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, the web providers for an alternative social media platform called Gab pulled their service from that platform. Why? Because Gab is a place that has very few restrictions on speech. Gab bills itself as a free speech platform where you can say virtually anything you want with few repercussions. The only exceptions are things like child pornography and that kind of thing. I have an account there but rarely use it because many of the people that have been kicked off of Twitter for saying reprehensible things have accounts at Gab, often putting swastikas in their username and so I don't go there very much because I don't like having people follow me with those with that kind of imagery and those kind of opinions. Call it a personal taste. Gross stuff to be sure, but it's their legal right to say these kinds of things. Yet there has been a coordinated attack on secular conservatives, especially in the build-up to the coming U.S. election, to silence right-wing voices. It's almost become a monthly occurrence on Twitter now where so-called bot accounts are deleted along with the accounts of wrong thinkers. I am personally at risk because the picture you see on your screen at this moment is a picture of Hilaire Belloc, who is not an anti-Semite, but because he repeated what the Catholic Church said about those people, has been billed as an anti-Semite by the thought police on the progressive left. I use his picture here and on Twitter. 
I periodically change my picture as my longer as my longer subscribers know, but I shouldn't have to. Yet right now, because Gab is the website where the gunman in Pittsburgh simply had an account and said legal if gross things, their entire business will be out of commission for several weeks while they seek out an international web hosting company that will respect their right to let people say what they want within the confines of American law. Gab has also been banned from pretty much every payment processor in the United States, as well as every app store known to the human race, because it stands on letting gross people say gross things. This returns us to LifeSite News. They aren't the first pro-life, pro-family website to be targeted like this. Traditional Catholics are labeled by the Anti-Defamation League as anti-Semitic because, th because we say we hold to what the church taught on all things prior to the Second Vatican Council. This includes that group who I will not name because to even say their name risks being censored. The U.S. has no hate speech laws. Indeed, the U.S. Supreme Court has repeatedly said that saying distasteful things is protected by the First Amendment, regardless of how people feel about it. If you don't think this is an issue we need to worry about, let me recount this anecdote for you. On Twitter yesterday, I saw a conversation between one of the more prominent figures in the online alternative Catholic media, talking about the need to preach the gospel to everyone, including and especially that one group that I won't name here, that one group that gets traditional Catholics labeled as anti-Semites. This figure rightfully said the most anti-Semitic thing you can do is to not preach the gospel to them, for it is dogma that there is no salvation outside the church. For just repeating this, which is a current teaching of the church, he received hate. Many people hold to the two covenants heresy, including many Catholics and many Catholics in the hierarchy. But more importantly, saying things traditionally taught by the church on salvation, marriage, human sexuality, gender, and the, and the need for a hierarchical society is outright hate speech according to the secular authorities. I often speak in code on this channel and would like anyone who listens to do the same simply because there is no tolerance for the truth anymore. It is labeled hate speech to out a convicted sex offender who now preys on Christian organizations who uphold actual Christian moral teaching. Think about that for a while because LifeSite News isn't the first, nor will they be the last, to be targeted by the enemies of God. LifeSite is considering legal action against their per persecutor and against their now former web hosting service for contract violations. If you want to help raise money for them, the article I read has a link at the bottom to donate to their legal fees. As always, that article and the other article I cite here are linked on the blog, which you can find a link to below. If you like videos like this, like and share this video and subscribe, and click that notification bell below. You can support my work if you feel so inclined through Patreon. A link to that is found in the description below, along with links to my Twitter, the blog, and the Facebook page I manage. For Return to Tradition, I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.